Hello, and welcome back to our video series on learning digital product release. This is the second of three videos covering the initial configuration or setup steps required for the product. To recap, as a release admin, your main setup task is to create release templates for different types of releases. But to do that, you need to first look at activating release policies and creating approval definitions as building blocks. In this second video, we'll be covering approval definitions. Here we'll be reviewing what approval definitions are, how approval definitions are used in the release process, and how to create two types of approval def definitions, dynamic approval definitions and static approval definitions. Let's get started. Okay, I'm once again logged into my ServiceNow instance as Andrew, our release administrator, and I've already navigated back to the digital product release workspace. Our next step in the setup process is to define approval definitions. Approval definitions allow admins to create either dynamic or static user or group approvals that can be associated with tasks when creating a release template. Tasks are manual activities that need to be completed within each phase of a release. We'll cover these in more detail when we create a release template in video three. In this demo, we'll create two new approval definitions. One dynamic approval definition seeking the product owner approval, and the other a static group approval definition. To get started, click on the define approval definitions in your guided setup prompts. This will take you to the release administration page. Let's start with the product owner approval. Click on the new button to create a new approval definition. Give the approval definition a name describing who is providing the approval. In this example, we'll use product owner approval. Set the approver source as digital product and the approval action as user. The approver source field defines the source of the approver details. Selecting digital product allows us to dot walk from the digital product record to look up who should be the approver, thus making this a dynamic approver based on the record. Approval action determines if it's a group or user approval. In the user field, scroll down and select owner. You can also click the small arrow next to owner and select manager. This would select the manager of a product owner in the digital product record. For now, let's just use owner. Click save to save the definition. Now navigate back to the release administration page and you'll see your new definition listed here. Next, let's create the approval definition for a group. Let's give the approval definition a name. In this case, we'll use QA approval. Set the approver source to approval definition and the approval action to group. In this case, by setting the approver source field as approval definition, we are creating a static approval. By setting approval action as group, we are indicating this is a group approval as opposed to a user approval. Next, we'll search for a relevant group Leave wait for as first response and click save to save the definition. Return to release administration and you'll see your two approval definitions listed here. Just like release policies, you can repeat either of these processes as many times as needed for your organization. In this instance, we've added one more for the product owner's manager approval. Now that we've defined our approval definitions, we're ready to move on to the next step and use these approval definitions in various release templates across phases. To summarize what was covered in this video, we now understand what approval definitions are, how approval definitions are used in the release process, and how to create two types of approval definitions, dynamic and static. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or are looking for additional resources, please check out the DPR community page.